Chair. And we're open, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. And welcome back. Yes, Councillor Wheel. Um, Chair McKay, uh, prior to Christmas, I sent you an email that I received from a constituent about uh, the challenges of downtown parking during the Christmas holidays. The gentleman that sent the email to me is a friend of mine, George Hollywell, and I sent that to you, uh, and you said that you'd put it on the agenda for a meeting. As you recall, when I sent that, uh, I included you in the in the email uh, from George Hollywell, and I'm wondering if uh, we're going to discuss that here uh, tonight. Uh, he was uh, very disillusioned with, uh, you know, we're trying to bring people downtown uh, downtown to shop and, and the commissioners, there's nothing against them. They're doing their job and they do a heck of a job. But it's sending out mixed messages to the community that we're trying to bring people downtown, yet, you know, if they're one or two minutes late, they're, they're, they're tagged with a, with a parking ticket. And I believe... Uh, Has Bill, kind of, I, just, I said that we would add this to a future agenda. I'm just checking right. So it's not on today. We do have a number of things, but I do agree that maybe we could add that to our next agenda. Wayne, or okay. could, that that just yeah. so that we have, we have a lot of things to discuss today. And I do agree. I'm checking it here. And I think we, we have some follow up regarding parking anyway that we haven't had in a while. So if we can add that, Wayne, or Cindy, maybe. Thank you. Sorry, okay. Jeff. I no. just make sure we have time to really have a good discussion on that. And no, and I. I just wanted to make sure it's administered through this committee, correct? Correct. The parking parking meters are, yes, yes. And we will okay. do that. Okay, next thank you. And Wayne, I'll make sure. I think you have information on that email, too. If not, I'll share it with you so you know, okay? Yeah. So we're going to ask for any declarations of conflict of interest. Done. Done. Uh, approval of our minutes from December 15th, 2021. Moved right. by Councilor Randall, seconded by Mr. Uh, Worship. Um, we're going to move right into discussions and reports, and we're going to start with the uh, economic development update. And I think I'd like to start by kind of thanking Wayne for moving us forward on this file. Um, he's been carrying the weight from the economic development uh, file while we determine um, how this role is going to be filled moving forward. So thank you, Wayne, for taking this on as well. Madam Chair, just under, you, you skipped approval of minutes. I just wanted to bring up something under approval of minutes. No, I didn't skip them, but you can go ahead. Yeah. Under the approval of the minutes, I just wanted to get a follow-up on the public art presentation from the planning partnership. When do we expect to get their full report, uh, Madam Chair? I'm going to ask uh, you. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, the planning partnership are on the agenda for this month's special meeting of council. So my understanding is that meeting has been postponed until the 31st. So they are on that agenda, and it will be presented to council at that time. We're not going to discuss it at this committee, the standing committee response for the report. It's going to go straight to council for for full endorsement, so that all of council receives the presentation. Because there could be um, financial implications that finance will need to consider. So we determined that by having the presentation made to all council members um, at a special meeting of council, then everyone is getting the information at the same time. So at that time, the, at that time, the city will just be asked to accept the report. And then any recommendations within it would come back through this actual committee. So will planning partnerships be uh, uh, tuned and will they be brought into our meeting virtually? Is that what we're doing? Yes, yeah. The planning partnership will be brought into the council meeting virtually and they will present the report to all of council at that time and will be available for any questions. You'll receive the full report in advance of the meeting. Well, uh, Laurel or Madam Chair, 31st is going to be a very full night because I know that we'll have the budget, the capital budget, as a presentation. I know that the Confederation Center wants to get on that uh, on that agenda as part of a presentation they want to make. And then there's this presentation, and I'm sure there'll be other presentations. But we can't get a sort of a capsule or a synopsis, uh, a, a, a summary of what the what's going to be presented. We'll have to wait until the 31st you'll get it as part of your package for that meeting. Yes, so that it's it, was, until, it was reviewed by the Arts Advisory Board yesterday and they have a couple of days to come back with any comments. They've just received the final draft of it. 
So once it is final, it will be given to Tracy um, to be included in your pre-meeting package that you'll receive. So you'll have an opportunity to review it in advance of the presentation in case you have any questions that you'd like to pose at that time. Well, we'll try to get it again, Laurel. It's the 31st is going to be a full night, so we may have to drop something. Hopefully we don't drop this because I'm very, very interested in what uh, we'll be getting the report. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think we'll have to make this a two a priority if we have people coming in online. But anyway, thank, thank you. Madam you. Um, all right. So, Wayne, I'm going to move into you for your economic development update, if you could. Okay. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, our team is just returning just a couple of weeks ago from Christmas break, so we were uh, we had an extended uh, Christmas break, so we're just getting really back um, at things, and we're continuing to work from home like many uh, city staff doing our part uh, through this uh, pandemic. A few quick uh, economic development highlights. The uh, 2022 President's Excellence Award, the Chamber's Awards, have now been moved from January to April as a result of the pandemic, so April the 13th is the new date for those awards and a friendly reminder to the committee that the city is uh, the sponsor of one of the uh, the awards and we do have uh, a couple of tables there for I believe for council at those particular awards. Um, we continued our dialogue with the Immigrant and Refugee Services Association with respect to reconnecting on virtual sessions um, throughout the winter months. Charlotte's on the call today. She's been doing a lot of uh, work behind the scenes working with that organization so we can get those sessions up and running similar to the orientations that we would normally do in the fall but also to connect on their current needs uh, report for the immigrant um, community we had a great session uh, just before Christmas uh, I had a good session uh, this week and I'll speak to it later on the reports with the uh, PI connectors um, group um, I also uh, have received um, the adjudicated results from our application to the Export uh, Community Investment Fund. Again, I'll talk to that later. And Councillor Twill, I do have a note here under the Economic Development Report uh, for parking to ensure uh, the email that you sent to Councillor McCabe gets put on a future agenda when we have sufficient time to give it the, uh, the um, attention that it requires. Thank you. Is there any questions for the Economic Development Fund? My question, my question is, to, uh, Madam Chair, is not so much for Wayne. Thank you for your report, Wayne. My question is to CEO, Mr. Kelly. Uh, can you give me a status report as to where we're at with the uh, position of the economic development officer? Yes, right now we have been working uh, with the department uh, who is there right now. Uh, we are refining some of the respons responsibilities, uh, and we are close to uh, finalizing an, an approach that we think may work. Uh, for all the issues that are at hand uh, and uh, they will be brought back obviously for dis discussion to make sure that uh, everybody's on side. Will that include the responsibility of uh, administering the tax incentives? Uh, that would be part of that uh, that responsibility, Councillor. Where, where would the other responsibility fi fall under? I'm not exactly sure what you're referring to, Councillor. Well, would the economic development, the new economic development officer, what his mandate would be to totally and completely administer the tax incentive program. There is one program that falls under that department counselor and that would uh, continue to stay there. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank Madam you. Chair, Madam Chair, I know that, uh, Madam Chair, it'll have to also go back to human resources. Um, it's so crucial. I, I'm glad the Councilor Twill brought it up. Uh, it's so crucial that we have a, an EDO in, in place because uh, our downtown is is going to go through a lot of uh, reinvention because of how the government services and some of our uh, in investment services will be moving to home to work from their own home place, uh, home home space or home place. So um, it's it's again it's very important. It's too bad that we lost our EDO just the, just the day we were planning to uh, open the Atlantic Mayor's Congress because uh, the economic devel development officers for the region all met, but uh, we had to have our economic de development and tourism and, tourism and festival events uh, personnel uh, participate in that uh, presentation. But Madam Chair, just on, on the parking issue, um, I want to add that we, we do have to look at this uh, app that we have. I don't know if it falls under this committee, the hotspots, which is, is causing some difficulty with uh, some of the users. 
Okay, we'll okay. add that to the next month's meeting too, because we're not going to talk about parking right now. No, no, no. That's yeah, what I want. Add add that, I don't know if that's even under our committee. With hotspots, but it must be. It has to do. With that's parking. under protect. Yeah. It's under protect. Under protective services, Madam Chair. But but we're responsible for parking, so it's it's a collaboration between the two standing committees. Thank you, well, Madam Chair. They have to get together, and we can communicate as staff working in silos, and we'll look at that. Thank you. Thank okay, Laurel Lee, tourism and cultural update. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so our staff are, are currently working remotely. It's going well. Um, we're used to, to working on the road, so virtual meetings uh, are pretty normal for us. Since the last time that the committee met, um, we have hosted Capital New Year celebrations. I know that if you looked back at the meetings, uh, minutes of December 15th, you'll note that the first round of uh, some restrictions that came into play weren't going to have a whole lot of impact on that event. Obviously, we know that things changed quickly. So I have to give a shout out to Charlotte, who is on the call today, um, for quickly transitioning that event to really great virtual activities that were well attended and well received to make sure that our residents were able to celebrate. Um, I know that the chair reported at this month's council meeting that we had over 2,000 people take part in the virtual dance party. Um, so that was a really great activity and, and kudos to you, Charlotte. Um, currently, our team is, is doing a lot of pivoting. Um, staff are working primarily on the Winter Lube National Ice Carving Championship, which is an agenda item later on the agenda. So I won't focus too much on that right now. Um, we also have resurfaced our Winter Lights Initiative, which our department developed last year um, in an effort to kind of bring some light to the darkness of winter um, when COVID restrictions went back into place last winter. So we've resurfaced that, we've made some adjustments, and then with this week's announcement of more restrictions, um, we've actually added a new component um, of mood booster activities that will be coming into effect next week. So Charlotte is working with communications right now and there's a news release um, that is being targeted for either tomorrow or Friday that will be announcing that programming um, publicly. We've also been working extensively with Capital City events on program programming for the Ice City Festival. Um, I know that Wayne is planning to discuss that a bit more during his update. So I will be cognizant of that and, and move along. Um, we're also planning for the next installment of the Canadian Capital Cities Organization Virtual Speaker Series. So the next session will be on placemaking um, and will take place on February 23rd when registration does open for that session. I will ensure that it is circulated to Council so those who would like to participate are able to do so. Uh, we've started our operational budget preparations um, in anticipation of finance issuing those templates and we'll have those ready to go uh, for next month's meeting. And as I mentioned, when the mayor inquired, um, we're also completing the final review of the draft public art plan that's been provided to us by the planning partnership um, with the intent that that would be presented to council on January the 31st. And that is everything. Thank you, Laurel, for your report. Is there any questions for Laurel? Yeah. Okay. Back to you, Wayne, event management update. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a few um, quick items. Um, we've been uh, participating in a number of attraction and prospecting meetings, so efforts uh, remain ongoing with respect to that particular area. Uh, event uh, hosting impacts are very broad right now, as I'm sure the committee can respect with the uh, pandemic. Um, Charlotte's doing a lot of great work with respect to this particular area, trying to determine what events have happen are happening, what events uh, cannot happen or project to happen and also tr to try to recover the business that's being impacted as we move uh, in this um, in this uh, q4 um, we have four to five scheduled uh, national championships alone which could be uh, impacted and likely will be in the month of march which will have substantial impact of loss uh, to the tourism industry so if that does happen we're trying to work hard to ensure that they are re-secured for a future time given the value of those uh, particular activities we're also rolling out our 2022 schedule of events um, for the full season, and we'll, we'll give the committee an update on that in the next meeting, likely with respect uh, to a master um, calendar. We're working closely uh, with all partners through Capital City Events, Inc., with respect to Ice City Festival, which is the modified version of the Jack Frost Festival. Many of those activities are outdoor and non-gathering events, so they would 
fit CPO, CPHO guidelines providing that we come out of this um, icebreaker uh, period that we're in, or this, sorry, this small period, circuit breaker that we're in, I should say. Um, been busy with a lot of boards and subcommittee uh, work. Canada Games is, is very uh, active. Um, the host society is, is really pleased with council's approval recently of the waterfront views with respect to the winter festival hub uh, as a part of the games. February the 18th marks a milestone. It's the one year countdown to the 2023 games, um, believe it or uh, not. Continue to do some uh, work on potential uh, legacy uh, projects, infrastructure projects at both East Link Center and Bell Alliance Center are well uh, underway. Uh, the lighting at East Link Center um, will hopefully be done um, in early February. Um, the boards and glass obviously are in and there's a number of other projects that will continue to roll. The same thing with, uh, with respect to Bell Alliance Center as well. Our team uh, now is focusing in on Q4 of the current budget and looking ahead to uh, the next, next fiscal uh, budget process. The Sport Tourism uh, Congress, which was scheduled uh, for March uh, in Edmonton, has now been postponed to the fall given the uprise uh, in COVID. Uh, I'm in a session uh, next week with respect to the East Link Centre's strategic plan. That organization is about to embark on a new strategic plan for the next uh, three years uh, with MRSB leading that process. Uh, we're rolling out the uh, Event Atlantic um, strategy. Our team is busy uh, with the World Council on City Data. Doug Dume is leading that file and we're providing uh, the updated inputs. And uh, finally, um, we're working toward uh, populating our event um, portal with respect to the uh, Adrenaline uh, platform. So just a few quick updates in the event management area. That is awesome trying to follow minutes on phones and minutes on papers. I'm sorry. Thank you very much, uh, Wayne. Is there any questions for Wayne at this time? Everybody's good? Okay. Perfect. So now, Wayne, you're going to have the next three items on our agenda that I'm going to just kind of let you introduce each one as you start. So the PEI Connectors, the CanX4 Community Investment Program, as well as the Jack Frost Winter Fest presents. Sure. So, Madam Chair, the next three items are simply all information uh, sharing, no action of the committee requires. Uh, you'll have some homework if you haven't already to, uh, to go home and uh, read some of the documents that I've attached. Uh, the first item is with respect to the PEI connectors. I had the opportunity recently to have uh, a great meeting uh, with Nicole, Nicole uh, Belfour from the, that organization. Uh, the city has had pa a past uh, relationship with this organization, but it, it hasn't been real active perhaps for the last uh, couple of years. Obviously, the, in, the pandemic has impacted that as well. The uh, PEI Connectors essentially works with um, immigrant entrepreneurs and job seekers, in short, and they do some great work. They're uh, provincial in scope, although a lot of their efforts are in the Charlottetown area, given the population base and the size of our uh, city. And we look forward to uh, strengthening and reconnecting. I attached a, uh, a presentation that Nicole provided me with, uh, a program overview of that particular organization, and wanted to share it with the, uh, the city as we move forward um, with our dialogue with that organization. The, uh, the next item is the uh, CAN Export Community Investments Program. Uh, this is a program that the city has accessed uh, money um, through in the past. Recently, I submitted uh, an application um, uh, through the help of uh, other staff in the department uh, to uh, try to secure some funding for the upcoming fiscal. We were successful uh, in securing a contribution of $17,875. I attached uh, a copy of the uh, approval process there and it shows you exactly what the funding is approved for. It's essentially for one-on-one -on -one, uh, attraction efforts. Um, it can be uh, in, in, in the United States, it can be in a number of European uh, areas it can be in a number of um, other Americas within throughout the world essentially we would be guided by the efforts of innovation PEI uh, they really play in the international space and lots of times the municipal government is essentially uh, participating as a partner in those missions and our, in the past our economic development officer has used that uh, funding to um, to participate in a number of missions so just sharing with the committee that we were successful in securing that funding and then the, uh, the final item that I have in this run is uh, just a little bit of an overview um, about the Ice City um, 
uh, festival. I touched on it briefly. Um, I just wanted the committee to know uh, some, what some of the activities might look like, and I've attached a document there that kind of gives you a bit of an overview. There would essentially be three to four signature events and then a number of micro events. Our public works department is working hard to trans, uh, transfer our Christmas lights into winter lights in the downtown like we did um, last season, and Morrill touched a little bit on that as well. We have some other artistic decor happening in around the downtown, and again, all these events, or the majority of them, would be outdoors and non-gathering um, efforts. We're meeting uh, in the near future. We may need to alter the dates. Uh, obviously, we want to be respectful of what's happening with the current um, uh, breaker that we're going through, but uh, just a bit of an overview for the committee so you can understand uh, what Ice City might look like this year. Thank you very much, Wayne. Is there any questions for Wayne? Rich, go ahead. Councillor Trail, sorry. You're on mute, Wayne, or Councillor Twill. I'll try that again. Wayne, I want to go back to the PEI connectors. Um, can you elaborate as to who, who's directly involved with the PEI connectors? And um, do you have uh, a summary or a summation of what's been accomplished so far? I know you touched on it briefly, but I'm looking, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get more of a visual as to what works being done and, and what the progress is. Yeah, Councilor Tweel, uh, the organization is uh, is a derivative of, of the Chamber of Commerce, the Charlottetown Area Greater Chamber of Commerce, and they do have an advisory committee which consists of members associated um, with the uh, chamber. The provincial in scope, um, they're operating in a number of languages. They have a staff. I don't have it in front of me, but I'm going to say they have a staff, perhaps of six to eight uh, individuals. <coughs> Excuse me, here in the in the capital city. They also have uh, satellite offices in the western and eastern part of uh, PEI. Their focus is um, new uh, newcomers and immigrant um, entrepreneurship, as well as job seekers. Uh, they've had uh, great success uh, over the year. They try to broaden individuals' networks to help them be more connected to the sectors that they're playing in. There's a lot of uh, champions associated with the organization in, in that they become uh, sounding boards for entrepreneurs and, and job seekers with respect to um, how the organization advances its, uh, its space. And, um, you know, I can't tell you a great much more than that other than the, if you, if you take a read through the document that I provided, it gives a good sketch and overview of the organization. It even gives a, an organizational chart of how they, uh, they operate. Uh, I know that uh, Nicole and her team are very passionate about this. Um, Ron Atkinson, when he used to be involved with, with the uh, city as the economic development officer, uh, was involved with the organization as well. And it's important that we continue to align our efforts uh, with them. There is an opportunity for the city to grow our relationship. And in fact, we're looking uh, at new ways that we can do that uh, over the next uh, month or two and try to advance our efforts. Okay, thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Councillor Twill. Laurel, we're going to move into Winterloo National Ice Carving Championships, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. So again, uh, this is just information sharing for the committee. There's no action that is required. Um, so the Winterloo National Ice Carving Championship is going to take place in the city from February uh, 5th to 6th. So the championship itself um, is actually taking place in 10 cities across the country. So obviously it's a product of the Department of Canadian Heritage um, and it's a, a derivative of the Winterlude Festival, which takes place in the national capital region, Ottawa Gatineau every year. Um, because of the pandemic, Winterlude programming in the national capital region has been suspended, but they have gotten permission for the championship to proceed under local COVID restrictions in each of the 10 participating cities. Um, so in each city on the 5th and 6th of February, there will be a team of sculptors that will have 20 hours to carve 15 blocks of ice um, into their creation under the theme of Olympic and Paralympic spirit. So obviously it's a nod to the uh, Winter Olympics that will be taking place in the same time period. Once the sculpting is done on that first weekend, um, there will be a cross country online voting um, 
campaign that that takes place where Canadians will have the opportunity to go on and view the sculptures and vote for their favorites um, with the winners being announced on what would have been the last day of Winterlude, so on the 21st of February. Um, the city itself has been engaged by the Department of Canadian Heritage to provide management and logistics supports for the championship in Charlottetown. And we have received a grant that will cover the costs of that championship in full locally. Um, Discover Charlottetown has also been engaged to take care of the local marketing effort and pushing that um, the voting campaign um, forward for local um, residents. And what's important, um, what's changed really since we, we would have last discussed the project before Christmas, is that the Public Health Agency of Canada has... While they've permitted it, they've indicated that the marketing isn't allowed to contain the specific location in the city that the carving is taking place. Obviously, in a location like Charlottetown, once photos start to surface, people are going to know where it's taking place. So as a result of that, we have been communicating um, with public health locally, and we will continue to do so over um, the next two-week period just to ensure that we have a plan A, which is our regular plan, that public viewing would be permitted under whatever restrictions um, may be in place at the time. And then um, if we need to, a plan B, which would involve enclosing the actual sculptures for the period that the, the sculpture is being created. And then once it's done, we would unwrap it and people would be able to view it in its location through the voting period as well. So long story short, things are proceeding. Um, we're just kind of taking it one day at a time, but um, both Charlotte and I will be on site for that weekend, taking care of anything that um, that needs to be dealt with. And if there are further changes, then we'll kind of roll with it as, as they come. But we just wanted to make the committee aware that it is now public. It's no longer under embargo. And um, it's a really great opportunity for Charlottetown to be part of a national event. Excellent, exciting, something for, to look forward to. Thank you. Any questions for Laurel? No? Okay, we're going to move on to Wayne. Your last item on our agenda for this meeting is the Year of the Garden 2022. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the Canadian Garden Council has declared uh, 2022 as Year of the Garden. As the committee uh, may be aware, um, Communities in Bloom and associated efforts are uh, fall within our area, and Charlotte uh, manages those particular files. Um, the city is a long-standing member of the Canadian Garden Council, and in fact, with my green thumb, I do sit on the National uh, Board of uh, Directors with, with that organization. Um, planning is underway uh, for a wonderful year of um, activities, and the Garden Council is inviting municipalities uh, right across the country to join in on the celebration and proclaim 2022 the year of, uh, of the Garden. Um, the year of the Garden is a great opportunity for municipalities um, to focus on the positive impacts and priorities of, of a number of uh, benefits. Uh, you have the list in front of you. I'm not going to go through uh, all of those. Uh, municipalities are being asked to celebrate by uh, joining in, and the Canadian Garden um, Council is proposing three items that municipalities proclaim 2020 uh, as the year of the garden, uh, that a commitment to um, be a garden-friendly city, which we already are, and recognize National Garden Day uh, within our municipality, which falls on the last Saturday before Father's Day. I don't believe that the city of Charlottetown has or does proclaim um, days. I'm looking for some um, clarification on that. If we don't do proclamations, uh, can we find a way to, uh, to show our support as a um, city that has received a number of national and international awards for our beautification as a city uh, that is often referred to um, as a great example how to uh, stimulate the beautification and tourism efforts of a community and as a city that we're proud of and um, have strong cultural diversity as a part of our efforts here at, at large. So if we can't offer a proclamation, how can we publicly acknowledge this and act on the efforts uh, as a member of the Canadian Garden Council. So um, th that may be part of a communications strategy. Let's talk with them and see what's the best approach to, to bring that uh, forward. Uh, we do have a standing approach not to 
uh, bring forth proclamations, but I think we have other options to explore. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Okay, is there any questions at this time? Answer to you. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, great initiative. Uh, I think it's fantastic, and, and the history and the tradition is quite illustrated in the uh, report that you submitted in the package. Uh, if it's okay, Wayne, uh, you talked about next year working with, I think, the Chamber of Commerce or downtown business with uh, further decorating lights in the downtown in one of your reports. I think that was the not sure it was a can export community investment program or was it the Jack Frost? It was Councillor Tweel. Um, last year and this year, um, we we're trying to bring the darkness out of what's happening with the pandemic and the darkness out of winter by transitioning the city's Christmas lights into right. winter lights. And so it's that's happening uh, with respect to our public works department. There was a lot of great feedback about that um, last year. And in addition to that, um, a number of items are added under the ICE City portfolio. So last year there was caribou that were put up around the Confederation Center and lit. Uh, there's been some art exhibits uh, put, proposed for in the downtown core. A number of buildings like the Home and Grand Hotel, Confederation Center, the City Hall Tower, and others all changed their lights to winter colors, blue and white and crisp uh, colors. So it's, it's, it's existing um, infrastructure that we already have being creative and using it in a unique way. Thank you, thank you, Wayne. Um, and I appreciate the emphasis in the downtown core. I mean, obviously it's, uh, you know, it's the engine for, for our economy, but, uh, you know, there's other businesses uh, and, and other areas of the city I would like to see become much more involved. Uh, over the last couple of years, Mr. Kelly will attest to this. Uh, I don't think there's a, a fair distribution of uh, Christmas lights being displayed throughout the city of Charlottetown. I did indicate at the time I would like our uh, tourism department to become involved and help with the planning. Uh, for example, uh, if you look at the entranceways into the city, University Avenue, uh, Queen Street, North River Road, Kensington Road, uh, St. Peter's Road, Longworth Avenue, uh, just to mention a few, I I'd like to just bring this to your attention for, you know, for consideration. Uh, I'd like to embark upon a, a, a new program that would uh, galvanize our citizens and get them ex get them excited, get them into the spirit, and uh, have them, you know, as they're leading right down to the downtown, feel that uh, feel that energy and that and that uh, and that spirit. Uh, you know, what happens is you leave the downtown; it's dark. I mean, it's like driving into a morgue. And uh, I'd like to see I'd like to see a whole new program and new planning. Uh, with respect to Christmas decorations, uh, working in collaboration with Public Works and, and seizing that opportunity. So, uh, Wayne, if you could take that under advisement and, and give that some thought, I'm sure we can have some future uh, future discussions. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, as you know, we're going to be dealing with uh, parking in the downtown uh, at you know one of our future meetings. Do the parking garages come under the, the mandate of this committee? I don't believe the parking. I think is it the fees, uh, Peter? If you could help me uh, provide clarification. Mm -hmm. that, that's we... that's uh, true, Madam Chair. That the uh, the fees that are charged come here, and then uh, the structural parts of it go to Public Works. So the overall uh, the vitality of the parking garages and the, and, the, and the future of the parking garages. Doesn't come under this. Uh, doesn't come under this committee, um, Mr. Kelly. No, it uh, public uh, works under the capital budget pro program, um, councillor. Okay. All right. I, I, thought, I thought they were. I thought. Sorry, Madam Chair. I thought they were interrelated, so that's why. You know, I'm, I'm confused as to why is it, why there is that separation and there's not consistency when it comes to uh, parking challenges uh, in the downtown. We have lots to certainly talk about. I want to follow up with you, Wayne, just to kind of make sure we get our agenda set for this so that we don't miss anything, because I do agree with Councillor Tool we need to look at this. And I guess but I want to But just to be I'll clear, Madam that. Chair, if I could, Madam Chair, with regards to the Christmas lighting that also does fall in public works, although there is nothing wrong with the committee referring issues to them, 
I do want to just let you know that it falls under their budget and their operations as well. Yes, thank you. And, and I just want to cl uh, cl clarify, Peter, although proclamations are not usually done, we, we sometimes pass resolutions um, to show support, because I know we've done that in other committees. Are we able to do something like that for this committee regarding the Winter Garden? Yeah, so the, the intent would be, Madam Chair, uh, whether it's done at the council level, but within support of the comms, to, uh, the comms department, we can for put forward a program that would help uh, bring some exposure to, uh, to that um, program. I think it, I'm getting a sense that most of our committees definitely supports this. Councillor Twill, you have one more question? I do. I want to go back to Mr. Kelly. I understand that uh, uh, Public Works uh, administer the, the, Chris, the Christmas lighting, but with all due respect, Mr. Kelly, I think there's some real uh, disparities and discrepancies and, and it doesn't seem to be working over the last two or three years. And I think uh, having the involvement of our uh, of our tourism department and the personnel in our, in our uh, you know economic development tourism, uh, I, th I think can only add add, uh, add a lot to uh, looking at a, a, a presentation throughout the city of Charlottetown where it is done on a, a equal and fair basis where where we can have all our citizens and neighborhoods and communities become involved as opposed to just certain sections of the city taking advantage of that. So that's why I bring it up here because I have a lot of confidence in our, our personnel here. Not that I don't have any confidence in public works. I think we need a fresh approach, to be honest with you. And I'm not uh, and that's, disagreeing. And that's, that's why, Mr. Kelly, I, I, uh, I'm determined to uh, see the city of Charlottetown, as I said, uh, our main entranceways into the city uh, become involved with uh, the Christmas celebrations. And we're not opposed to that, but again, we're just putting the responsibilities in the proper um, department uh, and also under the proper committee, because as you know, in the past it's been an issue when there's some uh, cross-involvement, although uh, the input from this department into that one would make sense. Right. I'd even like to formalize it. One other point, Madam Chair, and I'll end it for the evening. Uh, down in the United States, uh, the first of the week, they celebrate at Martin Luther King Day. And uh, maybe we can put that on our agenda for future discussions for next year. And I think we as a capital city uh, might want to consider celebrating Martin Luther King Day here, here in the city of Charlottetown and leading by example of uh, you know what a great leader he was and the whole movement of civil rights down in the United States. And I think we can make parallel some of those celebrations here. I think it's something we should seriously take under consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Might have a hard time pushing the American, uh, the American hero to the Canadian city, but I think he's a hero. Uh, I think he's a hero internationally, not just in the United States. On movement, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. So, is there any other new business? No. Seeing none, can I have a motion to adjourn? by Mr. Ramsey. I'm assuming Deputy Mayor Mitchell, you'll second that. All those in favor to adjourn. Yeah. Thank you very favor. much for your time. And you hopefully in person soon.